Today we ask the age-old question, does size matter? To make it short, yes it does, but bigger isn't always better. While also modern electric and diesel locomotives have varying wheel sizes, this phenomenon is especially pronounced with steam locomotives. The drivers of a shunter may hardly be more than a meter, while the ones of an express locomotive can easily reach a diameter of 2 meters and beyond. To understand the necessity of those vastly different sizes, we have to understand how a steam locomotive moves in the first place. Minus the rare steam motor locomotives, like the German class 19.10 of course, the driving wheels are not individually driven by separate motors, like it's done with modern locomotives. Instead, the power from the cylinders moving back and forth is transferred into a circular movement by the connecting rods and then distributed to all powered wheel sets by the coupling rods. One movement cycle of the cylinders translates directly into one rotation of the wheels. The faster the pistons move, the faster the locomotive goes. But there's one problem with that. The back and forth of the pistons and rods results into constantly changing masses, causing a permanent rocking motion. The outcome is a rough ride and a lot of wear. While there are many ways to address these issues, most importantly counterweights as well as ample lubrication, these measures can only reach so far, and 400 rotations per minute is usually seen as a practical maximum for a steam locomotive in regular service, setting a hard limit to a steam locomotive speed. And that is where the wheel size comes into play, because how much distance a locomotive moves during a single cylinder cycle is not dependent on the cylinders, but rather the parameter, the running surface of the drivers. Bigger driving wheels translate to more distance in one wheel rotation or cylinder cycle and therefore a higher locomotive speed at the same cylinder speed. In that way, the drivers of steam locomotives act very much like the gearing in modern locomotives, just that you can clearly see them from the outside. One of the reasons steam locomotives are so much more diverse, as bigger driving wheels are not always beneficial. You probably understand by now that large drivers are the telltale sign of an express locomotive trying to get the most speed out of each and every cylinder stroke. But this comes very much at the price of pulling power, as the large drivers have a much more unfavorable leverage effect and as such require more energy to be turned. Plus, smaller drivers allow for more of them being fitted in the same space, improving traction. As all of that also directly affects acceleration, it's not only goods locomotives, which are usually equipped with small drivers, but also those used for urban passenger lines, where swift acceleration is key. But it's certainly not an either this or that situation, as depending on a locomotive's purpose, its drivers can reach almost all sizes. A locomotive meant for fast freight trains might have slightly larger but fewer drivers than one for heavy freight trains, while an express locomotive meant for mountainous terrain may have smaller but more drivers than one for the lowlands, with a mixed traffic locomotive falling somewhere in between. A fast and powerful thank you goes to my channel members, including Contrian, Dave Heise, Flip Schwib, Kay Frankly, Lukas Ilskens and Steamy Player for helping me to continue doing what I love doing most. Why not consider subscribing to be informed about all future videos, as there are many more to come. Until next time, here at Steelbridge Models.